Hey everyone, it's Susan and welcome to the weekly vlog. And this week I have a question from someone named Jill. And she writes in, Hi Susan, it's Jill, one of your boot campers here. Can you please speak about enablers, friends, spouse, etc., who don't want us to recover because it rocks the boat and how we can address that? Thanks. So, Jill, that is a really great question. And I gotta say that it really, in my experience, is true that when we change our eating and we start to get healthier, it's gonna be threatening to some people. And sometimes those are the people who are closest to us. Sometimes it's acquaintances, people at the office, people we go to school with, you know, friends or just associations. And they can express that um, in all kinds of ways. They can get sort of passive aggressive, make jabs at us, comments. Um, even I've heard of people living in the house with people going through the Brightline Eating Boot Camp who deliberately bring the other person's binge foods into the house even when they've asked specifically not to have those foods in the house. Um, so it can be challenging for sure, Jill. And um, I guess I have two thoughts about this. The first one is that um, it's really important that we settle in deep in our soul that we need to do this. And that us getting healthy is the right thing, not only for us, but for everybody around us. It is by definition a benefit to the world and to everybody who knows us when we show up as the best version of ourselves in a healthy right sized body with sparkly eyes and shoulders thrown back and present for the moment and able to devote with passionate energy all of our gifts and talents and expertise to whatever task is at hand, all of our love, all of our focus, all of our attention, that is the best thing for the world and for all the people around us, whether they recognize it or not. It is absolutely the best thing. So once we know that for ourselves, that it is our job to take care of ourselves to the max and be the best version of ourselves, once we really feel convicted in that, then what do we do about other people who are showing up in our space with their negativity or their, you know, passive aggressive behavior. Um, well, I think that at that point we have two options. One is to detach and accept that maybe those relationships aren't relationships that we're going to have in our life long term, because one of my favorite sayings is water seeks its own level. Water seeks its own level. What I've found in my recovery journey, which has now lasted 21 years, is that the healthier I've gotten, the healthier the people are that naturally are attracted to me and that I'm attracted to them and that we mesh, right? And there are a lot of people that used to be in my life that aren't in my life anymore because we're not a fit anymore. Water seeks its own level. I don't know if it's because I'm threatening to them or if it's because they engage in activities and practices and um, pastimes that I'm not interested in anymore so we have less in common. I, you know, who knows, whatever the reasons are. But absolutely, there are friends in my life um, that I used to have that I don't really connect with or spend time with anymore because um, whether it's their attitude, is negative and I don't really enjoy being around it or whatever. It wasn't ever really a conscious decision of I'm cutting this person out of my life and I doubt it was that way for them towards me either. It was just more of a, um, we just aren't on the same page anymore. I'll put it this way, it works the other way too. I know that when I started doing drugs heavily as a teenager at the age of 14 and 15, my best friend from childhood, she and I parted ways because she didn't go into the underworld the way, I th the way that I did. And so for you know five or six or seven years, we just weren't in each other's lives because I was so, um, sliding downhill and water seeks its own level. She didn't come with me. So 
we parted ways for many, many years and we're now super close again. Um, but that's just one example. So, so the first thing is detachment, you know, and I'm not here to say that any of the relationships you're talking about are relationships you shouldn't have in your life anymore. That's not what I'm saying at all. It's just that, um, in my experience for some relationships in my life, that's been the case. Now that said, the people who are very dear in our lives, our spouse and our family members and our closest dear ones, if they're showing up in our life with that kind of sabotaging behavior where they're um, indicating either overtly or covertly that they don't want us to recover. In my experience, the best thing to do about that is to address their real need and their real concern and totally ignore the little niggly way that it's showing up. So for example, it might show up as, come on, you're not going to have one of these cookies. I baked them special. They're, you know, blah, blah, blah. Or, you know, are you sure that we can't go out to eat at this restaurant tonight? You know, you're no fun anymore. Whatever it is that they're saying, right? Ignore that and go right to addressing their true need or concern, which is, are you going to change so much that you don't love me anymore? Are, are you, is this more important in your life than I am? Are you different than me now or better than me now? Or are we not going to bond over food the way we used to? Are things going to change so much that I'm not going to be important to you the way I always have been? That's their real fear, right? Is that you're changing and that therefore they might get left out in the cold. And how do you address that? With a hug with a quick look in their eye and just, I love you. With, you know, hey, I actually really don't feel like going out to eat right now, but could we maybe rent a movie together and cuddle on the couch? Or, hey, you know, um, please, I don't want to eat any cookies. They make me feel sick and it's just not, it's not what I want to be doing right now, but you know, maybe we could do a crossword puzzle together or, you know, I just want to let you know how much I love you and how much I want to spend time with you. How about we fill in the blank non-food related activity that you love doing with that person? And as soon as you start communicating your love for them and your commitment to spending time with them and sharing experience with them, my ex expectation is, my prediction is that um, their antagonism or their sabotaging behaviors will start to melt away because really what they want is you. They don't want you eating. They just want you. So those are my thoughts, Jill. I hope that's helpful. And if you have a question for the weekly vlog, go ahead and email it in to me at Susan at brightlineeating.com and I will see you next week. Take care everybody.